Hi kids, I am here with your Bible story for tonight. You remember if you've been joining us, you remember the last story we read was a runaway slave. Um was we got into talking about Abraham and or Abram, sorry, still called, and his wife Sarai, and Sarai's um, slave ran off because Sarai was mistreating her, and then Sarai's slave came back, and she had a baby by Sarai's husband, and then when Sarai had a baby, she had her husband send her slave, Hagar, and the son that she had by her by Sarai's husband Ishmael had him send them off because she wanted her, her son to be the one that had got everything that's the way God wanted it but Ish, he made he made Ishmael a great people as well so today we're getting more into Abram and we're going to talk about the wicked city, which is, we'll be talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says, And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Genesis 18:26, The first book of the Bible, chapter 18, verse 26. If there was even going to be one person in Sodom that was innocent, that was not a bad person, God would have saved the city on account of that one person. But the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, both cities, were so bad. The people in those cities were horrible. They done horrible, horrible things. No one cared about any anyone. They did not care about the Lord at all. They were very, very, very evil people, doing a lot of bad things. You can see in this picture here, it's supposed to be Lot, Abram's nephew Lot and his daughters. And let's get into the story, see what happens. When Abram gave Lot his choice of the land for his flocks, Lot thought that he had done well to choose the land near the Jordan. Here the fields were greener and the waters were plentiful. But beyond the fields and the rivers lay two great cities, Sodom and the other Gomorrah. And the people of these cities were very wicked indeed. As Lot's cattle ate the grasses of one field and he moved them on to another, he found himself moving closer and closer to Sodom until finally he was living right among the evil people of the city. Lot tried to do better than the other people of Sodom, but it was hard to keep from getting into trouble. Once when some foreign kings captured the king of Sodom, Lot was taken as a prisoner right along with the others in the city. His uncle Abram had to gather together some men and come and rescue him. You might think that this would have taught Lot a lesson, but it did not seem to. He went right back to Sodom to live with the bad people. While Lot was living in Sodom, Abram continued to live in his tent home under the oak trees in Hebron, away from the wicked people. It was easier for him to obey God and to worship him with sacrifices upon an altar. One day, when Abram was sitting at the door of his tent, about noon, three strange men suddenly appeared before him. Now Abram had never seen these men before and did not know who they were, but he hurried to do what he could for them. He bowed low before them and asked them to stay a while with him. He offered them water to wash themselves and a place to rest and he told Sarai to prepare for some food. After they had cleaned up and rested, he served the strangers a wonderful meal of meat and cheese and tender cakes that Sarai had made. 
After they had eaten, one of the men began to speak to Abram about the blessings God had promised him. You see, the stranger was the Lord himself. He told Abram that his promised son was going to be born soon, but he had some sad news for Abram too. He was on his way to Sodom and Gomorrah to see just how wicked and sinful the cities were. If it was true that they were as bad as they had been, were said to be, he was going to have to punish them. Abram grew worried about his nephew Lot. Are you going to destroy the good right along with the bad, he asked. Would you save the city if there were fifty good people in it? The Lord agreed to save the city if fifty good people could be found there. But Abram must have known there were not that many people in Sodom who were trying to do the right thing. So he made another bargain with the Lord. I know I am not worthy to suggest it, but if fifty could not be found, would you save it for forty-five? Again the Lord agreed. Suppose there were just forty, thirty, twenty, ten. At last the Lord agreed to save the city if only ten good people could be found there. Now the two men that had visited Abram along with the Lord, had gone ahead to Sodom. Lot was sitting in an important place at the gate of the city when he saw the men approaching. Like Abram, he bowed before the unusual strangers and asked that they stay in his home that night. No, the men replied, we will sleep out here in the street. But Lot was afraid for them to stay outside where the wicked people of the city could find them. At last, he persuaded them to come home with him. After they had eaten supper and were getting ready for bed, there came a banging at the door and the sounds of a crowd in the street. Someone outside called to Lot, Where are the strangers that came to you today? Send them out here to us. It was the wicked men of Sodom, and they had come to hurt the men of God. Lot stepped outside the door and closed it behind him. He begged the men not to harm his guests. But the men pushed Lot aside and began trying to break the door down. Suddenly the visitors opened the door and drew Lot inside. Then they caused the wicked men of the city to become blind, so that they wandered away, not knowing where they were going. Then the men told Lot that the Lord was going to destroy Sodom. They told Lot to gather his family together and leave at once. All night, Lot begged his son-in-law, who were soon to marry his daughters, to leave with him, but they just laughed and made fun of him. Toward morning, the angels told Lot to leave behind the son -in to leave behind the son-in-laws, but at least take his wife and daughters away. Still, Lot lingered in the city until finally the men had to lead him outside the city gates. There they urged Lot, run for your life, do not stop or even look back. As Lot and his family hurried to a nearby city, the Lord rained fire out of heaven and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lot's wife could not resist, and she turned and looked back. When she did, she turned into a pillar of salt. So Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt because the Lord said, whatever you do, run away from the city and do not look back on it do not look back I don't want you to see what I'm doing to this city because he was destroying the city and everyone in it all the wicked people and Lot's wife turned and turned around and looked like she wasn't supposed to do and she instantly God turned her into a pillar of salt it's just like a hard like a hard rock pillar like a statue, you might want to say. And Lot and his daughters, of course, had to carry on. And you see Lot with his daughters in this colored picture, going away from Sodom and Gomorrah. We'll be getting, we'll be talking more about Abram 
in the more then the stories more to come because like I said all of it basically starts with Abram Abram and throughout you couldn't even get throughout this book throughout the Bible without starting with Abram so I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's story I will go ahead and mark the page for our next story it's going to be Abram's greatest test and I can't tell you what that will be but it's really going to test the true heart of Abram and see if he really puts God first in his life be a big test for anyone and see if you would be able to do the same thing if God asked you to do it so I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's story a wicked city and I hope you guys are doing good and being good and doing good things for the Lord and because we don't want to be like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah who were bad and disobeyed the Lord because those people are just going to have they, they might have good life here on earth and have a lot of pleasures and money and be as happy as they can be on earth but when they live a life like that they'll spend an eternity in hell they won't get to go to heaven with God like Jesus says don't lay up your treasures here on earth your treasures will be laid up for you in heaven you're not supposed to lay up treasures here for yourself on earth what's here on this earth is not important because you can't take the material things with you you won't be able to take your money to heaven with you you won't be able to take your house or your car the only thing you'll be able to take to heaven with you is if you help to save souls to bring to Jesus to bring your family and friends to Jesus so they'll be able to go to heaven with you one day so that's the most important thing is making sure that your, sa your soul is saved so you can get to heaven and there's nothing more important than us trying to lead others to Jesus so they can spend an eternity in heaven as well instead of facing an eternity in hell because we certainly don't want that for any of our family or friends or anyone not even your worst enemy you wouldn't want to see them suffer in hell like that but I would let you guys go I hope you enjoyed tonight's story and God willing I'll see you guys again soon with our next children's Bible story bye guys God bless